Cincinnati, 88.9 WNWX Miami Town Harrison Coleray, 89.1 WKCX Crittenden Florence and Alexandria, and 89.3 WYNS Waysville. Bulldog Nation on Class X is brought to you in part each weekday morning by WinterWorldCincinnati.com. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Ladies and gentlemen of the American Jury, the Class X audience, and Bulldog Nation, I take great pride in the fact that I do not want one minute of any show to ever suck. And I believe that that is a standard which is worth upholding. And of course there are some times when you just have some radio magic and you don't expect it, whether it's the topic or whether it's a guest or whether it's a call or whether you're just on your super duper A game. And there's also, it's amazing to me, uh, doing radio now I guess for five or six years, that you never can predict uh, both the mood of the day and the mood of the audience and even your own mood. Yours truly, of course. And today, as I drove in here today, like yesterday, it was like a sleep-deprived Monday, typical day. We had an absolute great kid in here doing the traffic. Jake was great. His dad and Chip, he and Chip had a good time. It was also great having Jerry in here. And it was a great show. A little bit of levity, you know, Monday after the football games. And I don't know why, maybe it's the combination of the fact that I begin a trial today that has national significance, or maybe it's because it's eight degrees outside and below zero wind chill, or maybe it's because yesterday was the inaugural address and I had to sit and listen to that and all the commentary that followed. But I join you this morning on these airwaves of Class X Radio in a melancholy slash philosophical slash deep slash analytical mood. And I can feel coming from this voice from deep down inside me some outstanding radio superbity not from the light fair but maybe from a little bit of heavy fare. You know, the difference between eating a salad for lunch and eating a steak. You know what I'm talking about? And it was amazing to me what a totally missed opportunity that our president had in delivering an inaugural address. And I had a interchange back and forth, an exchange, uh, if you will, with Willie last night about it and about the state of our country. And I enjoy my relationships that I have with my friends and my mentors very much. For example, I call them the board of directors, and this is a pretty good board of directors. I have a board of directors which I consider my father, Judy Phillips, Larry Forge, Larry Grouse, and Willie pretty good board of directors. I mean, those are five people that I can trust, five people that I can talk to, five people that when they criticize, and trust me folks, they give me critical advice, that I know that it's coming from a good place. And then of course, I also have a great staff and good friends and supporters around me. But I very much enjoy, you know, my relationships with my board of directors and I speak to them like, for example, yesterday I think I interacted with all of them except my dad. I didn't have any conversation with my dad yesterday. And, you know, everyone that has intelligence and common sense and, you know, the American traditional attitudes about this country all feel the same way. But the thing that I interacted with Willie about is the fact that I don't understand why we re-elected Barack Obama 
And I don't understand why, if you look around this country, you can't find anybody that has the right stuff, the right stuff to be elected president and become president and everything else. Now, what I'm about ready to say, I am completely freaking serious. All right? I do not have national ID. I do not have national name recognition. But I suspect the time shall come, sooner than later than you might think, where I do. And I want you to know that as soon as I receive that national name recognition, I shall run for President of the United States. And I shall win. And I shall show all of these muckrats that have been President over the last few decades how it's done, what to do. For example, yesterday, the message that I would have delivered at the inaugural address would have been off the charts. You know, people think that they faint. There's people that fainted when they listen to Barack. Or was that one radio listener over at 700 WLW when I, he was listening to me? He said, I got him so pumped up, he went out and hit him. He wanted to go out and hit the mailman. Mm -hmm. Well, they might faint when they listen to Barack Obama, but you know what they're going to do when they listen to me? They're going to take the mountain. They're going to charge through the wall. And you know what? Willie, now you just think about how big shot Willie is. Willie's got a national TV audience, national radio audience, and he's down with me. He said he'd be my attorney general. I said, man, you got the job. Can you imagine what a great attorney general Bill Cunningham would be? And those of you that think this is a bunch of pie-in-the-sky gobbledygook, I remind you that Barack Obama was a community organizer, and I'll put my resume up against him any day. But these guys are robots that oppose... I mean, look at, look at Rob Portman. Come on. Who's inspired by him? Who's inspired by Boehner? Who's inspired by Romney? Who's inspired by these guys? I try to get inspired by Romney. There are times and events which require less written and spoken. And in that regard, on the occasion of the day after Martin Luther Jr. King's holiday, I carry with me into this day, as I fight the battles which I battle every day, two verses from the book of Amos, the second of which is carved on Martin Luther King Jr.'s Atlanta Memorial. Take away from me the noise of your songs to the melody of your harp. I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Yes, that is what's carved on that memorial. Let justice roll down like waters in righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, I spend every day of my life in the trenches battling for justice. And what is justice to you, and what is justice to me, and what is justice to somebody else may be different. But there are some universal truths when it comes to justice. We all know slavery is wrong. We all know that pedophilia is wrong. Do we not? And do we not also know that libel and slander is wrong? And do we not also know that meanness, pure e meanness, and evil is wrong? Yes, we do. And I can tell you this. Whether it's analyzing what's going on in the world politically or fighting a legal battle, I can tell you this. I can tell you this. We need individuals that've got guts and leadership ability. And it's not just something people talk about, you know, eh, we need leadership needed. No. We're talking about it in its rawest, purest form. Barack Obama, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury yesterday, didn't even mention the dead. 
Didn't even mention employment. Didn't even did not mention the world. Did not mention the world. He could mention. Let's make sure all the gays get the same rights as everybody else. That that was important for him to mention. This man, supported by the likes of Joe Biden, Harry Reid, and the rest of them, would rather destroy America on an uncharted and unguided course to oblivion rather than lead it to the promised land. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, I'm starting out my music today with some deep music. It'll also make you feel good. This is Amos Lee, behind me now on Class X Radio. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. By the way, I think I'm going to be here the whole show. I think court starts at 10 and not 9 like I thought. I'll get some verification of that, but... Uh, Dr. Kurtzman will be in here anyway, and we don't mind that. P. Rose Way from Broadway to Johnny Bench Way will be closed until February 3rd. A crews are removing a pedestrian bridge if you didn't know that. Quote of the day, law is whatever is boldly asserted and plausibly maintained. Something that I'm going to be doing a lot of in this coming year is there's something called the Brandeis Brief where you actually change the law through facts and time and circumstances or what is called sociological jurisprudence as my godfather pointed out Saturday and you know what there are so many things that need to be changed for the better so many things you know it's amazing how as bad as it is in this country that there are solutions to it all but we don't have a president can grasp it uh, today in history, oh by the way, Jake, it's good to have you on board. Garrett is not here today, uh, and you know, he's lucky because since he's not here, I could fire him, because as we know, the rule is if one consul is gone, the other consul has, you know, unilateral power, but I'm not going to fire. Where is Garrett today, Jake? I think he's down in uh, Lexington. Okay. He's down there for Coca-Cola. And it's a good thing that we have you as a backup, and of course, thank you for having the laptop since my printer wouldn't print again. No problem. Because, and of course, traffic, uh, just take a look out there and hope it's all going well. <laughs> How about that accident yesterday? Oh, it was horrible. 86 cars, 11 semis were part of that 86. A little 12 year old girl, did you hear what happened to her? I didn't know. She gets out of the car, somebody hit like the median in the, between the uh, two northbound, oh. southbound, and one of those cables oh. cut and whipped around and got her in the neck. Horrible. Gosh. The pictures were just, just yeah. unbelievable. So one guy said, I, I heard him interviewed, he got hit like 10 times. 10 times. Is that how it all started with the little girl? Or? No, no, no. Just, just whiteout. Just a whiteout. Yeah. You know, a chain reaction. You, you know, people are going 70 miles an hour. Bam, 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 bam. Scary. Uh, today in history was the first time in 1939 that uranium atom was first split at Columbia University. How you like that? And Stan Musial died just a couple days before he was elected in the Hall of Fame in 1969. Of course, he just passed away two days ago. First commercial Boeing 747 flight from New York to London happened in 1970. Remember the show Emergency with Robert Fuller? I remember watching Emergency back when I was a kid. 1972, it premiered. And in 1973, Roe versus Wade. Yeah, don't worry about clips, Jake. U.S. Supreme Court legalized some abortions. Hmm. Kmart 2010, or yeah, 22, excuse me. Filed chapter 11. Chapter 11. Today's birthdays. Diane Lane, 48. Got a crush on her. Linda Blair, 54. Stephen Perry from Aerosmith is 64. Sir Francis Bacon would have had a birthday today. And of course, Sir Francis Bacon, <laughs> no, he did not create bacon sandwiches. He wrote the great history of the fall of the Roman Empire. Sam Cooke, the great vocalist, born today, and Walter Riley. And that is true, it's named after him. Riley, North Carolina. I'm pleased to report no military deaths. Today, partly cloudy, high of 18, low of 9. Some places are already at 8. 
Wednesday, mostly cloudy high 27. Thursday, mostly cloudy high at 29. The feel-good song of the day, which we'll, you know what, Jake, we ought to play this song too sometime on our show, is Andy Kim, Rock Me Gently. TC used to tease me about that. Everybody used to tease me about that song because it's, it's not a rock song, it's a pop song, but you got to like Andy Kim. And when people gave us a hard time, we would Andy Kim them. <laughs> because it's hard to not feel good with Andy Kim. Let's rock him gently. Rock him gently. Useless and interesting facts. The Secret Service code name for Jenna Bush was Twinkle. Yes, that's pretty useless. Uh, the Secret Service code name for Chelsea Clinton was Energy. I wonder why. What's the, what's the word behind this? The largest cell in the human body is the female egg. My wife was explaining this to me yesterday, like little Riley has all the eggs that right. she will ever have in her body right now. Isn't that weird? That is fascinating. They, they have them their whole life. Yeah, that's right. Fascinating. Totally go down. Yeah. Wild. In 1789, the Supreme Court Chief Justice salary was $4,000. Just so you know. By the way, the Chief Justice salary in 2010 is 223000 George Washington appointed the most Supreme Court justices, 11. Well, he had to start it. <laughs> and only FDR came close with nine. Shoo! No wonder we had the court that we had after. Roosevelt had nine. Here's another piece of useless information. Feet have 500,000 sweat glands and can produce more than a pint of sweat a day. Here's my theory about that. They're at the bottom. That's so all, everything's going down. Everything's flowing to the bottom. That yeah, might be it. That might be That's my theory. A anyway. pint of sweat. pint of sweat. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Carter is the only president to serve a full term without nominating a Supreme Court justice. Sorry, Jimmy. Your body gives off enough heat in 30 minutes to bring a half a gallon of water to a boil. Mm-hmm. Wow. The FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list gets all the glory, but the Secret Service also maintains a 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list. They're kind of wanted for computer bank and identity fraud. Jake, do you know anybody on that list? I don't. Not anyone I can talk about on air. Okay. The human body is estimated to have 60,000 miles of blood vessels. You know, that boggles my mind. It's crazy. Because we all know what, like, a trip to here to Florida is. Right. It's not even a thousand miles. No. So sixty thousand miles of blood vessels. What? I don't believe it, Jake. I don't know if I do either. I don't believe it. Scientists. It's impossible. <laughs> the Secret Service has more than sixty-five hundred employees, which means there's probably somebody hiding right here. <laughs> you know, William, I want to congratulate you, buddy. You're doing some good questions. If practice makes perfect, and no one's perfect, why practice? Might as well just sit on the couch all day. Because it's the strive. It's the strive. You know, oxymoron today is pretty good, too. Legally drunk. Yeah. I'm drunk, but I'm legally drunk. Is the joke good? I haven't previewed it. I, I didn't preview either. Okay. Two weasels are sitting on a bar stool. One starts to insult the other one. He, he screams, I slept with your mother. The bar gets quiet as everyone listens to see what the other weasel will do. The first one again yells, I slept with your mother. The other says, you're drunk. Would you please go home, Dad? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> oh, my God. Word of the day is galophobia, which is the fear of France or French. Don't we all have galophobia <laughs> a little bit? Don't we? I would think. During... Kelly Clarkson's performance at yesterday's inauguration, the former president, Bill Clinton's head, was seen peeking out from behind another audience member, making it seem like he was looking at her backside. The photo's gone viral. We're going to have to find that photo. Oh, yes, we will. Sounds like Bill. I couldn't help it. Not if Bill I'll tell you something about Kelly Clarkson. She's up there singing, and this guy was blocking my view, so I just kind of turned a little bit to the left and looked, and I said, wow. <laughs> Besides that, you see Hillary yesterday with them glasses? She looked god-awful. <laughs> I mean, she did. Hillary looked god-awful. I mean, I love her because she's my wife and all, but she's god-awful looking. I saw Kelly Clarkson's backside. I just had to take a look, Bulldog. Emma Watson, the actress, says she likes that British men are dressed well and well-mannered, but feels she can't date them because they are too restrained. She says Americans, they wear flip-flops and are too forward, which she doesn't necessarily like. 
So if we dress up, but we're still a little laid back, then that's perfect. See, that's what I decided. I changed. I did a makeover with mm -hmm. my image. I have worn a suit since June 15th every single day at work, mm -hmm. something I used to never do, except two days. And I didn't like it when I didn't. So I'm still the bulldog with that same kind of attitude, mm -hmm. but I'm a well-dressed bulldog. Well-dressed. I did notice when I was in London, the people in London tend to dress pretty nicely. Yeah. You okay. know what, people? You know what? I've kind of changed my attitude about that. I think dressing good and well, particularly your profession, I think it pays dividends. I think it does. Yeah. One of the reasons why I did it, I'm not kidding, I do television interviews every freaking day. I was like, right. man, I, gotta, I don't want to get caught without my suit on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, this is about break -upping, uh, breaking, breaking up with somebody you love, but it's really, we could apply it to our country. This is great kiln jeopardy on Class X Radio. I love it. It's a great song. I used to dance to this song and use it the whole dance floor at the conservatory on Class X Radio. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. By the way, Skyfall has been censored in China with scenes referencing torture and prostitution being cut. Uh, feel a little bad, a little too close to home. You know what I'm saying. We're going to get you a traffic report. I do want you to know that about 43rd in Winston, we got a report from Pastor Dan, who will be in here on Thursday uh, from 8 to 9. It says that there's a wreck down there and everything is blocked. Hope there's no more wrecks. President Carter asked if he was excited to see Beyonce sing the national anthem. Uh, he said he really was. He was looking forward to seeing it and also the president. Good old Jimmy Carter. The nicest guy that was the lousiest president. I rank him third of all time bad presidents. <laughs> Let me see, what's worth talking about? Britt Hume spoke of Beyonce almost in a starstruck tone. Said it was stunning. Good golly. Chris Wallace warned him about Brent Musburger. Catherine Webb. Dana Perino. Defended him. You know what? I'm becoming more and more a supporter and fan of Dana Perino. And I couldn't stand her when she was the press secretary under Bush. But I think her, her job now allows her to, quote unquote, spread her wings a little bit. Chris Brown is the latest victim of what's called swatting. The Hollywood Hills home was sworn by police after a caller said there was a gunman in the home. Man, I hope nobody does that to me. By the way, last night, a police officer showed up at my house to ask me, this is a funny story, to ask me if so-and-so had called me, and I said no. And I knew this, this police officer. And he said, uh, well, he said that he did, and you were his lawyer. And I said, boy, they, a lot of them do that, don't they? And he goes, oh, my God, they all do. Is that hilarious? Everyone people, wants the bulldog. People get pulled over or whatever, they want to, or they're drunk, mouthing off to the guys. I'm going to get the bulldog and sue you. I'm going to... God. He says, it, he says it's all the time. And, of course, they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big deal. Pick up on that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Rihanna, she asked her waiter at Hollywood's Laugh Factory Comedy Club what his biggest tip ever was. She said 100 so she gave him 200 very good, Rihanna. Tip well. CNN correspondent Jim Acosta jumped and screamed at Obama as he walked. You know, I feel like I should pitch myself right now, Wolf. I can't believe I have this vantage point. And of course, Al Roker got uh, Biden. We got a clip of him. It's yeah. <laughs> He's like screaming, waving. Right, right. Then Joe Biden came over and shook his hand. Yeah. Joe Biden, he's just smiling all the way through. He's brain dead, but he's having a good time. Crazy Joe. <laughs> oh, by the way, Chris Matthews compared Obama's address to Lincoln's Gettysburg address and Lincoln's second inaugural address. My God. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, I am a student of Lincoln. 
I have his original works, like letters he's written, I mean like everything, okay? And I'm enamored by it. If you go read Lincoln, you think about this guy not having a formal education, it's off the charts prose, off the charts. I challenge anybody to read the Gettysburg Address or Lincoln's first and second inaugural and compare it to anything that Barack Obama has done and it's like kindergarten versus master's degree. Golly, man. I'm telling you. And I'm going to, uh, I was telling Willie last night that the last, the last hope that we have to turn the country around is a sales pitch that we have to make on that 51% and get a few of them to change their minds, and I'm going to discuss that later in the show. Bud Selig in town to announce that the Cincinnati Reds will hold the All-Star Game in 2015. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's going to be a good, a good thing. As it Bring sure a lot of will be. The city. UC junior guard Sean Kilpatrick, East Big East Player of the Week. We already covered yesterday that Phil Nicholson is going to say, I'm out of here. The NCAA basketball poll, top 25, Duke's first. Let me see, Louisville's fifth. Indiana's seventh. By the way, congratulations to the Bearcats. They almost beat Syracuse. The 21st, Ohio State's 14th. I cannot believe UK is not in the top 25. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. Today's the anniversary of Joe Paterno's death. Boy, that doesn't seem like it's one year has gone by. Mm -hmm. Wow. Man, oh man, oh man. That's something else when you think about it. One year. Cyclones play the Evansville Icemen. Boy, it gets good original, Evansville. It's the Icemen. <laughs> Super Bowl is February 3rd. By the way, February 2nd, <clears throat> at about 9 o'clock when I'm going to be on, will be my first primetime weekend comedy show down at the Thompson House, formerly the Southgate House, at Newport on the Levee. And I will promise to make you belly laugh. <laughs> It'll be comedy superbity. Yesterday, that was the, I guess that's the only game that concerns all of you folks. Notre Dame did lose to Georgetown, but uh, the Bearcats lost to Syracuse, 57 to 55. And in today's basketball games, we have Louisville plays Villanova, Ohio State. I they host Iowa. UK doesn't play. Uh, both directions of I-275. We mentioned this already. We're closed around 11:30 a.m. for seven hours. 86 vehicle crash near the Colerain Hamilton Avenue and a 12 year old girl was killed. Jeez, so sad, so sad, so sad. I-75 southbound, there was a 52 vehicle accident that closed that interstate between Middletown and Monroe. And that was at the same time. 10 people were transported to hospitals. So we had an 86 vehicle and a 52 vehicle. Now it'll be interesting to me, see, I, you you have to excuse me, give me a break here, because I'm, I'm a plaintiff's attorney. So I think about these things, and I like sharing them with you. You know, those accidents, you know, an act of God, if that's the reason why both these accidents happen, just think about it. None of those people will recover money for injuries and personal injuries if it's nobody's fault. Now, my guess is a lawyer, such as myself, might argue that maybe somebody that hit him from behind was driving too fast. But that's a tough, that's a tough case. And I can tell you this, the case with the, tw the little girl, that's a case. Let me tell you how you think about that case. Was the cable, you know, is it not a reasonable expectation that a median cable is going to get struck by a car? Right. Yes. And should it be such that it doesn't snap? Yes. I mean, those people in their grief, but you watch, they'll get a lawyer. Sure. I mean, that, that shouldn't happen. You ever seen a coyote, Jake? I have. Well, animal control officials are saying that there's reports of them outside Dayton. Well, I want to tell you something right now. I think, you got the next one? Uh, there's coyotes all over the place where I live. And, and our dog, Trace, can howl like a coyote. He goes out there and goes, oh! I'm like, that's Trace? That's pretty good howl. Pretty good howl. You know what I mean. Uh, Zachary Williams and Michael Klein, both 25, disappeared around 6.30 a.m. Sunday from the Warren County Inmates Community Correctional Facility. They just decided to walk away, you know what I'm saying? They decided they were going to walk away.
Well, you got that song already. I, that I song's not four minutes, though. It's a short it's not, song. No. Florence, Kentucky Police Chief Tom Zerlinski has announced he will retire April 1st. All right. 21 year old Michael Chambers was arrested Sunday on two counts of felonious assault after he fired a shotgun at a man who had fled the scene of the BP. Well, what the heck? What's he supposed to do? I don't get it. Two dancers at a strip club in Wisconsin, one who was pregnant, have been cited for disorderly conduct after fighting over a dollar bill. <laughs> they all count, man. They all count. Lorraine resident Joel Perez in Ohio has been charged with domestic violence. He hit his brother over the head with an urn, forming a cloud of human dust around his body. Why would you choose an urn as a weapon? I don't know. <laughs> of all the things you could smack someone in the head with. Yeah, why an urn? Don't choose an urn. Bad weapon choice. Bad weapon choice. Use a gun. <laughs> the great equalizer. The gun. Ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, I give you a psychedelic song for my psychedelic mood. This is Jefferson Airplane. I'm sure they were stoned when they wrote this. White Rabbit on Class X Radio. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio, the Northern Kentucky Live Class X Radio magazine. I'm writing an article for it. And my article is about radio law and the media and the fourth branch of the government that it used to be and I think everybody's going to find it pretty interesting. And William, you are fired. Thank goodness for Dan Francis, a UK fan, Pastor Dan, who texted me that UK plays Alabama tonight. I apologize to all you Wildcat fans. By the way, Garrett, uh, did you get a case of that beer that was in my truck that was left over from the ski trip? Garrett took, took Garrett took it. both. I had two cases of beer in the back of my truck. It's been there since Christmas time. And of course, Garrett spotted it. And of course, Garrett took it. I helped him carry it. Did you help him carry I it? I did help him. We had a pretty cool uh, discussion, Jake, about music before our show got started. And how about your music? I called it a drug that leaves no scars. And it's amazing how you can alter your mood by music and listening to music. Music's pretty darn cool, isn't it? I do like music, yeah. And one show that I'm going to do, I'm going to do this sooner than later, I am going to go through ten scenes, or as many scenes, let me see if I do one, two, three, four, no, it would be twelve scenes of a movie that I'm going to write one day, and I'm going to give you the scene, and I'm going to give you the song of the soundtrack for that scene. For example, my opening and closing songs to my movie will probably be the immigration song and all along the watchtower by Jimi Hendrix that'll probably be my closing song and of course some more songs that will be in my movie burning bridges by the Michael Kerb congregation which I'm going to play for you today Joan Jett I hate myself for loving you will be in my soundtrack but I'll tell you right now, my soundtrack will be the greatest soundtrack of any movie of all time. It'll be a feel-good soundtrack. But uh, you said Amos Lee was up in Dayton. I wish I would have known that. I could have yeah, seen it. Recently. Soundtrack. I hate myself for loving Where would that be? Would that be the breakup song? No, 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 no. That's just going to be an action song. Okay. Like maybe the, maybe the female and male antagonists yeah, okay. will like have an argument, a fight, you know, before they make mm -hmm. up. So we'll have that kind of a scene. Yeah. But they won't be broken up completely. Mm -hmm. You know, it's important. I know that this, this new movie that's coming out that Sill from Tony Soprano, Bruce Springsteen guitarist, uh, is produced. They say, and he did it with also, I think, the guy that did The Soprano, Stephen Chase, they say the soundtrack's really good, and it was, would have cost a whole lot of money, but they did it for little Stevie. They did it for Stevie Van Zandt. They did, they did a favor, yeah. and they cut him some breaks. So he's got some top music and a great deal. So that's pretty good, you know. The uh, Lobo will definitely be in it. That'll be the, that'll be the love scene. Got to have that. How about the uh, Chamber of Commerce? 
hooking up with the some unions, you know why, because they'll build it, and these governors, and just completely ignoring the cost of tolls to not only you and me, but the trucking industry. Did you see the article yesterday, the impact this would have on the trucking industry? Pretty scary. God love the trucking industry. I mean, you know, every day going back and forth across there, yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. Not good, not good. Lance Armstrong, Wall Street Journal. Forget about athletes as role models. It would just be nice if there were more fathers in the house. Well, you know what? That might be, but let me tell you, I'm not a hero killer. I say we need heroes. I need, we need people that inspire. And if you've missed it, I encourage you to listen to the first segment of today's show, which was Radio Superbity, and I'm going to repeat it in more depth later, because I want everybody to hear it. It was my very serious announcement and game plan to be your president one day. Michelle Obama, let's go get a jack wagon up her. At the luncheon after the inauguration, rolled her eyes at John Boehner when he told a joke to the president. I hate her. I despise her. Her and her bangs. By the way, her bangs look terrible. Obama on financial equality. Did you hear those words that he used yesterday? He used the word collective. Sound a little communist to me. My fellow Americans, we are made for this moment and we'll seize it, as long as we seize it together. For we the people understand that our country cannot succeed when a shrinking few do very well and a growing many barely make it. Oh my God! A shrinking few. Well guess what, Mr. President? Your economic policies are the reason why. And did you hear him talk about how we shouldn't have to choose between taking care of the older generation and, and investing in the future? The future generation, Mr. President, you're loading them up with bankruptcy. Don't act like you care about that generation as you tack on debt. Our country needs me, folks, because let me tell you something. All those people with a national platform like Hannity, O'Reilly, Limbaugh, Beck, two problems with them all. A, they don't have the guts to do it. And number two, they're not in the trenches every day out here along the watchtower. And they also can't cross over and walk into the hood. The bulldog can go into the hood. The bulldog can go to the farms across the the Midwest. They can't. Romney could. I will keep the same conservative libertarian policies, but I know how to relate. And I know what life is really like for everybody out there from A to Z. I digress. Uh, Barack Obama took a shot at conservatives in Congress. For now, decisions are upon us. We cannot afford delay. We cannot mistake absolutism for principle or substitute spec. What about your absolutism of liberalism? You know what I mean? Spectacle for politics. Oh, you're not politics. Yeah, right. Name calling is reason debate. Really? Mr. Name caller himself. We must act knowing our work will be imperfect. Really? Mr. Let's not freaking take care of the debt. This guy is a joke. For our journey's not complete until our wives, mothers, and daughters can learn, learn a living equal to our efforts as he has a cabinet packed full of men. God. Climate change? Really? Boy, that's a pressing problem in this country versus 16.4 trillion and counting. He says, the commitments we make to each other through Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security do not sap our initiative, they strengthen us. They do not make us a nation of takers. Oh my God. Oh. Lousy, lousy, lousy. It's incredible, folks. But you know what? I'm going to make you feel good. 
This song will make you feel good. It's Gordon Lightfoot, Sundown on Class X Radio. Cincinnati.com. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. You got a traffic report there before we continue down the yeah. road? And as you do, I just want everybody to know that uh, Paul Ryan was booed yesterday's inauguration. <laughs> Go ahead. We just got a few incidents. There's one on Dorchester Avenue at Reading Road. Um, there is metal, like I guess a big piece of metal in the westbound lane um, at River Road. So I guess uh, watch out for the metal. All right. Get that song yesterday named after our new traffic reporter. Uh, Shannon. Okay. Yeah, we'll get it. Thanks. We're gonna I premiere. We're gonna premiere unless she sucks, which I don't think she's going to. We're going to premiere on Friday our permanent traffic reporter. And we now know we got a lot of great backups. Angie Prickle was great. In fact, I offered Angie Prickle the job. Just so you know, she was offered the job. But she can only do, she can't do Monday. She can't, I mean, I'm like, ah. Come on, Pete. I got to have it every day. I know. Cheryl Jones was good. I like Jake. Jake was good. You like Jake because of his name. Well, he's got a cool name, yeah. Yeah. Senator McConnell sent a, in an email saying, you and I are literally surrounded. The gun grabbers. <laughs> it was interesting. Hannity had this show on where he had this expert gun owner. She explained and showed how the semi-automatic rifles were the less the least dangerous and powerful of all the other guns she shot. She showed what a shotgun would do and what a this pistol would do and that rifle would do. It's pretty interesting. I'm telling you, guns, they're not going to get away with this, folks. Gingrich said it's a great American experience to be at the inaugural. Peaceful transfer of power. Yeah, I don't know what I'd prefer, the peaceful transfer of power or maybe an unpeaceful taking of the power from the jack wagons. Sorry, but I wonder. Wonder, wonder, wonder who. Who wrote the book of love? Michelle Bachman, she was there to take photos. Hey. Lightweight. This is from Reagan's second inaugural. My fellow citizens, our nation is poised for greatness. We must do what we know is right and do it with all our might. Let history say of us these were golden years when the American Revolution was reborn, when freedom gained new life, when America reached for her best. Little better poetry than old Barack's speech. All he wants is more government. He actually used the word collective action. Things together. He has absolutely no concept of the raw individuality of Americans. The raw individuality of Americans. That's what it's all about. I'm telling you. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Atari. Remember Atari, man? I played Pong. Filed for Chapter 11 in his of Seller Assets. Good old Atari. Red Robin, you like those burgers? They're going to test new premium burgers with Kobe beef and bison. It's only going to be $15 hamburger. <laughs> Cumulus Media has bought a country music station in New York City for the first time in a decade. Country music and the Big Apple. You know, you just don't think country music when you think Big Apple, do you? I don't anyway. Do you? I know. Uh, yeah, I think you have to go to Tennessee. Memphis. Yeah, Tennessee, man. From 2001 to 2012, ADHD jumped big time in kids. Oh, well. The luncheon, the inaugural luncheon, featured lobster tail, New England clam chowder, bison, and apple pie. 3,000 calories. Who cares? Eat what you want. Be fat. That's what I say, be fat. How about this? The prince has confirmed he killed Taliban members from his Apache helicopter. Wow. He's a born killer. Nice job. Good work. Good job, Prince. Now go back to Vegas and have yeah. some good times. 
This is interesting. Our documents for today, the Articles of Confederation in 1777. Each colony had one delegate. Representation based on population. Eh, they didn't work out very well. But what the heck. They tried. Our founding fathers, they tried before they, before they went on. They tried that. But, you know what? You can't win them all. I already promoted my comedy show, didn't I? I think I did. Yeah, once before. February 2nd, you got to be there. Uh, coming up on our show, I'm going to discuss justice. I'm going to have more about the economy. I'm going to discuss a little bit about the Sarah Jones trial, which begins today. Uh, what else do I want to cover here? This is a, <laughs> this is a funny email from a uh, fan. Went to Hawksworth Blood Center to donate blood for the first time. Was asked a bunch of questions, but the one that got me was, since I was in the military, was I ever in Europe during the years 1980 to 89? My answer was yes. I was twice in Europe during that time. I was then informed that I was not able to give blood because the AAFES may have used meat that was tainted with mad cow. Something the military failed to inform me as I was getting out. My response, because you know they sent me this, what am I supposed to say? Right. Well, I guess if you had mad cow, you would have phoned at the mouth by now. God bless you. <laughs> Thanks for your service. I want to promote this event. Sunday, February 10th, 2013. Autism Rocks is a fundraising event at Peg's Pub on Reading Road in Evendale. There's Prisoner After Midnight, Sunny Mormon Group, Relics, Dallas Moore Band, Stagger Lee, Slam, Cincinnati Centers, Big in Iowa. Show starts at 12 p.m. That's an all-day event. And I'm going to promote that some more in my newsletter, blog, yada, 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 yada. Jason Likens, who is Garrett's brother-in-law, trying to squeeze in on Bulldog Nation member photographer Sabrina. Oh, right. Garrett apologized for his rudeness to try to take Sabrina's. Hey, Jason, when you look like Sabrina, send us a resume. Did you see uh, the pictures he took of Garrett, though? No. They were pretty good. Were they good? What did he take pictures of Garrett for? Uh, the, he, like, what did Garrett do that was photographic? Well, he came in here one time. Ah, I see. Just the two of them, I think. I see. I'll be honest with you, I didn't see him. Well, send them to me, and if they're better than Sabrina, we'll fire her. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not... We don't need her. Right? I'm, not, I'm not loyal to Sabrina at all. I mean, yeah. I hope she's listening. She'll freak out. <laughs> she, she's so easy to pull her chain. <laughs> oh, my God, it's so easy to pull her chain. Man, oh man, oh man. Today, what a day today's going to be. I'm not kidding you folks. I think it's the combination of the eight degree temperatures, the fact that we got another four years, I'm feeling melancholy. But I'm feeling wise. Very wise. I'm almost feeling poor. Today would be a good day for me to write a poem. It would probably compete with the likes of Robert Frost if I did. <laughs> you know who used Robert Frost's poem at his inauguration was JFK. Yes, he did. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, I think it's a good morning for some lead for the head on Class X Radio. All of my love I give to Bulldog Nation. All of it. Not half of it. All of it. Class X Radio. I'm going to do a morning rant in my morning voice. Ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, Plato, when he wrote an entire book about justice, said that justice was really an individual doing what he is best suited to do. He actually took an economics approach to the, the idea and the concept. When I first read this, I was like, what? You know, isn't justice supposed to be what is right under any given circumstance? And as a lawyer, for example, you recognize that justice can have various categories 
for example, the traditional, you're right, or you are wrongfully accused, and you're not guilty, and that's the justice, you know, the win. Then there's other times when justice is, what is the fair punishment for what this person did? What is the fair financial award for this dispute? Who should win the dispute based upon the facts and the law? And I had that quote on my website for some time, and I also had on my website a quote that was in my Uncle Jerry's office for all these years on a plaque, Teddy Roosevelt. Someone who the conservatives, who do not like the progressives, loves to hate. T.R., who wrote, Aggressive fighting for the right is the noblest sport the world affords. And I truly believe that. And when you're looking at economic justice in this country, pure economic justice in this country, you're not going to get economic justice in this country the way we're going. You're not going to get it under the policies of Barack Obama and the Democrats. And we didn't get economic justice under the establishment Republicans. One of the things that just makes me despise the establishment Republicans and those that have been in power for so long is how they failed us. And what's their excuse? Because they were supposed to be like us. They ended up being, to use a cliche, wolves in sheep's clothing. They were nothing more than a Troy horse. Yeah, they were. Unfunded prescription drug bill. Thank you, George, and Republicans and Democrats. No child left behind. The Iraqi war. The Afghani war. Thank you, thank you very much. And it goes on and on and on. But I want to turn my attention to the justice in law. Justice in law. And you know they say that a trial, and I suppose that it is, that any trial is supposed to be a search for the truth. Let's find out what the truth is. One of my favorite law movies, it might be my favorite law movie, of course is Justice for All when Arthur Kirkland decided to take in his own hands and turn against the prosecutor, turn against his own client he knew was guilty. But another favorite justice movie and law movie is The Verdict. When Paul Newman stands in front of that rail looking at those jurors during his closing argument in a medical malpractice case that involved a lie in the forgery of a number on an anesthesia record that was revealed at a trial. And what did Newman say to that jury? He stood in front of him and he said, you know, you're the law, you're the justice today. Not the scales of justice, not the icons, not the monuments, but that jury was justice. They get to decide what justice is. And it's very frustrating because if you are someone like me who likes to be in control, well, everyone knows that when you have a jury trial, you lose control because it's in the jury's hands. You only have control in what is presented. That's all you've got is control in what's presented in house. And even then, you don't have complete control. Just imagine whatever you do for a living, if the whole time you're doing it, you got somebody else in the same field fighting with you about what you're doing, and you've got a referee there who's making decisions as you go forward. Imagine, imagine if you performed surgery like that. It wouldn't be good. But I can tell you this, I marvel every single day of not just the injustices in the world that you see from economics and society, I marvel every single day at the injustices that occur 
in the legal system every day. And I have adopted, I I was talking to my godfather and Chuck Holbrook at dinner Saturday night, and I said, you know, I am going to dust off the Brandeis brief, and I am going to go on some missions this year, and I am going to fight some battles that others don't have the guts to fight, nor the will to fight, nor the means to fight. For example, how fair is it that if you fall out of a tree and break your leg, your health insurance company has to pay it without regard to reimbursement, but if you're in a car wreck and your health insurance pays for that broken leg and you want to get money from the insurance company of the car that struck you, well, your health insurance company, they need that back. And I've got a case, and I've done it on purpose. No lawyer's got the guts to do this. i got a case where we are going to fight that battle. And what's awesome is I have that full support of my client to fight that battle. And it required me to push a company to the point to where they finally sued. So now we have something that's called right. It's right to take action. Here's something that goes on every single day. Well, I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that. i got some more that I want to talk about. And, and the reason why I'm mentioning these things is it's not just relevant to what I do. It's relevant to society and how so many things we need to just change. And people don't understand. People don't have no idea of what's going on because they're too busy. I'm going to elaborate when we come back about prosecutors. Why do prosecutors, when they realize they've got the wrong person, just drop it rather than require, you got to plead guilty to something. What is the moral pursuit that's worthy of that policy? Can't think of it. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, I love this song. It's about love again, but we could put it right on our economy. It's Bruce Springsteen trapped on Class X Radio. Fam, Class X. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Yeah, see, that song's an example of uh, Bruce's talent over Bob Dylan's any day of the week. All right, I'm getting steamed. You know what? Well, first of all, before I get steamed, let's let Garrett uh, do his traffic report. It's Jake. But, Jake. Uh, My yeah. bad, Jake. Accident on Beachmont Avenue, uh, Columbia Pikeway, Cincinnati accident, 5th Street, uh, Ray Street. Um, there's an accident at McGregor Avenue at Reading Road, and then lastly, an accident at Wyoming Avenue at Latham Avenue. That's it. All right. Be safe. Listen, folks. You know, you heard me say that... Uh, Yesterday, the missed opportunity of the president. Of course, this guy is incapable. He's not capable of delivering the address that needed to be delivered yesterday because of his political liberalism, socialism. But can you imagine if a new president was standing on that stage yesterday and say, it is time to throw out the entire tax code and start over. <laughs> and we're going to do it nice and sweet and short and simple. Can you imagine? But of course, it's not going to happen with this guy. It's time to balance the budget. It's time to make Social Security, Medicare, so forth and so on, viable as opposed to helping lead us off to the cliff. And you know what? Images count. Like it or not, they do. This guy, Francis Wilkinson from Bloomberg, wrote an article, an editorial about the speech, praising his speech. <laughs> and he talks about 
Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, free us to take the risk and make this country great. We failed to respond to climate change would betray our children and future generations. So strapping on 16.4 trillion in debt, what does that do, Mr. President, about betraying our children and future generations? And Wilkinson wrote, when he closes the speech with you and I as citizens, he's talking about citizens as moral actors inextricably bound in a tight web of human endeavor. Act not only politically with the voices we lift in defense of our most ancient values. Really? God, Constitution, and capitalism, all of which this president attacks. I have not heard one freaking pundit. And I'll tell you right now, if one more person like Bill O'Reilly or somebody on his show has to say this when they're trying to be critical of the president, which he was yesterday, he was criticizing his speech, says, well, he's a good man. Really? What good man jacks up America's debt to $16.4 trillion and wants to put on a gas pedal? That's a good man? He's a good man because he fixes his daughter's toast in the morning? A good man is not defined by fixing toast for your daughters in the morning. Or snuggling with popcorn with your wife watching a movie. That's how we're going to judge our president? I didn't hear one single person comment how a big freaking waste of time and money this pageantry yesterday was. If I was the President of the United States during these times, and of course you know when I'm elected in 2016 or 2020, there will still be some bad times. I wouldn't have had it. No, 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 no. I'm no Jimmy Carter. I wouldn't be canceling any Olympics. But an inaugural and the parades and all that stuff and all the politicians yesterday commenting, oh, this is history and all this pageantry and whoa, 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 whoa. While Rome burns, we parade. What the... Are you kidding me? And then when they try to talk about working together, we know that's a bunch of crock. Don't you get sick and tired of politicians saying, the American people want us, the American... I, I saw Mr. Robot Portman say, the American people, the American people. I just want to slap him. You say American people one more time, Portman, you're going to get slapped. And it's all a bunch of gobbly gook. You know, John Boehner has to one minute shake the president's hand and act like he's buddy, and the other one are stabbing each other in the back. Why don't they just throw down and state their intentions of where they stand and fight out the battle? All this phoniness. We got problems out the yin-yang, and we're throwing a party. A party. A pageantry. And everybody's getting their little dresses. You know, we get to hear about, ooh, she had Jimmy Choo shoes. Michelle Obama had Jimmy Choo shoes. And Mrs. Biden had this kind of gown. And blah, 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 blah. And all the balls and all the... Um, I just wanted to puke. When do we get down to work? Work. Solving freaking problems. I want to tell you right now, the Democratic and Republican establishment better fear the freaking bulldog when I get my national platform because they ain't seen nothing like me. They will wish for Hannity, Riley, and Limbaugh. No quarter from me. 
incredible. Let's have a party and keep driving the bus off the cliff. How can this president not mention the economy, the debt, the jobs, even in a metaphor, even in some implicit way, even if he doesn't want to give a policy speech? He is not a good man. He is evil. Why? Because he's destroying America. And I challenge you. See, I would love to get on the debate stage with Axelrod. Axelrod, give me one name of one person in American history that has done more to harm America with this 16.4 trillion debt, no budget, and going, 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 than Barack Obama. And the answer is freaking nobody. No one has hurt America more than Barack Obama. And it ain't even close. ACDC, who made who? On Class X Radio. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. You know, uh, Jesus has that is quoted in the Bible as saying, Forgive them, they know not what they do. All those people that have voted for Barack Obama and want our country to stay on track to where we're going, off the cliff economic cliff they don't understand that they are going to destroy themselves they know not what they do because all of those who are dependent what's going to happen to you when there's no money to pay your dependency and see I don't buy the fact that this dependency is a better way I remember back in the roaring 90's I knew painters roofers drywallers Construction workers, they were working, and they were making money, and they were happy. And you know what? That's a better way. Far better way. Um, I just wrote an article about radio, law, and the media, about the fourth branch of the media. And, and I want to tell you something, folks. I get along with our local press. I think that's pretty obvious. But I cannot believe their irresponsibility and their stupidity in the last couple days on this Sarah Jones case. Every one of them, the Enquirer this morning, Channel 5 this morning, Channel 19 last night, I almost text Trisha Mackey, I said, I just leave it alone. They say, Sarah Jones is suing for $11 million. No, we aren't. I have told these freaking people over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And they don't have the mental freaking agility to understand that a default judgment of $11 million, which we got against a company that didn't exist anymore, and boy do I regret publishing that, we did it on purpose. No one would know why. We wanted to scare the hell out of people that this is what could happen to you. Instead, the focus became on, what well, was it, the right company? And da 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 And that default judgment was not collected. Sarah Jones has not received a freaking nickel, a dime. Today begins the first opportunity for her to seek some justice against the dirty.com. And guess how much we're asking for? No particular figure, whatever the jury wants to give her. Not $11 million. They take a default judgment and then they, they extrapolate that out to $11 million. See, folks, this is why I go bonkers with our country. We got a president that doesn't do what needs to be done relative to the economy, and we throw a freaking party. We got news media that has the mental agility of ducks. And they're supposed to be people in our society relying upon what the news media reports. And they can't get it right. And then my opponent in this, Mr. Gingrass, says this, this case is going to, it, it'll destroy all women. No, it doesn't. You know what this case is about? 
This case is about libel and slander. Libel and slander. Let me do that Matthew McConaughey on you again. Close your eyes. Think of the young teenage sister you have. Your aunt. Your mother. Your daughter. Your granddaughter. And think of some dirtbag son of a bitch telling the freaking world falsely they got chlamydia and gonorrhea. Had sex on a desk. Had sex on a football field against school policy. Had sex with every Bengal football player against Bengal policy. You think of that son of a bitch that says that and what would you do? Well, many of you don't have any freaking guts. Your wimps, your whip sacks, you wouldn't do anything. You'd let them get away with it. Well, Sarah Jones, with the help of yours truly, had the guts to sue the son of a bitch. This case is not about shutting down the internet. This case is about common decency and the law for justice on libel and slander and defamation. And about the guy named Nick Ritchie, also named Homerin blah blah blah, also named Corbin Grimes, also named Nick Lamas Ritchie. It's about this dirtbag deciding what goes up, what comes down, give me some money, I'll take it down. Ooh, don't give me some money, I'll leave it up. It'll be, it's about a guy that edits it like a newspaper and then tries to be, claim he's just Facebook and YouTube. And guess what else he does? He makes it up. He writes stuff under your name or someone else's name and it's not his name. It's him doing it. And then he denies it. Ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, I do not know what jury we will have. I do not know what the outcome will be. But I do know one thing for freaking certain. I shall seek, to the best of my ability, justice. For Sarah Jones, not just on her behalf, on behalf of your sister, your aunt, your cousin, your daughter, your granddaughter, your mother, your grandmother. This guy is capable of saying that about anybody. Think about that, ladies. Think about that, men. Think about that. Chlamydia and gonorrhea. False. For two freaking years. And it ain't got jack to do with the Dixie Heights scandal. It doesn't have jack to do with that. What would you do and let me tell you something. If you say nothing, the hell with you. Play a song, Jake, before I have a stroke. On Class X Radio. This is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. I'm not finished with injustice, Dr. Kurtzman. What'd you think of the big inauguration yesterday? Well, I, th I think it's a great pop and circumstance. I know there's a lot of money spent. It's unbelievable how much Secret Service and preparation is available there for that. Uh, I, I respect the office, and I have a great deal of respect for it. I think it's a wonderful event for the world to see. But the money spent is crazy. Also, but all the, all the balls apparently are paid for by private uh, donations. But the uh, the inauguration speech is what I would focus on. It uh, did not hit home. I mean, he was really running on the same policies he's had for the last four years, the same things over and over again. He's going to push things through Congress. He's going to try and fight with Congress again. He really isn't going to compromise at all, at least according to what we're hearing from that speech, whether it's the gay rights, the climate, the entitlements. I mean, we are still going to run up. He's uh, running up the $16 trillion tax bill, and there's no end in sight. The fiscal cliff, I mean, he's not addressing that. A three-month delay by Congress, I think, is a, a bunch of crap. It's like, let's handle the problem. Let's do it now. Let's quit putting it off. Let me tell you something. I just wrote at the top of my USA Today here. I wrote injustice and I wrote taxes, regulation, debt, 
budget, jobs, energy. I could go on. However, I want to stop for a minute. Where is the justice? And when I'm talking justice, fairness, where is the justice in the fact that over 50% of those living in this country do not pay any federal income tax? Where is the justice that we have an over-regulation of business that kills job creation? Where is the justice, Mr. President, if you act like you care about America's future in 16.4 trillion in counting in national debt? Where is the justice in not submitting a single freaking balanced budget? Where is the justice in not reforming Social Security, Medicare, for future generations? Where is the justice in people not having a job? Where is the justice in you blocking time and time again energy independence? Where is the justice of your bank policies which tighten credit? because of Dodd-Frank and the regulations. Where's all that justice? And you know, I mean, it just, it's incredible. And, and you, know what, you know what I hate? I, I see him and, him and Michelle in their picture, and they're waving, and they're, and they're having all this good old time at the party, when the country's going to hell in the hand, no, no, hell in the hand basket, it's going to hell in a freaking handmade canoe from China. And I don't get it. I don't get it either. It's like, it's like he's governing for the quote 47% that uh, Romney talked about. He's giving everything away. He's taxing. I think he wants to run taxes up. He wants. He does want to run taxes up. He wants to run entitlements up. There's no end to it. I mean, there's got to be. Some he wants to step. He wants to step on the gas pedal. Yes, he does. Let's accelerate this spending. Let's, he doesn't want to. And and what blows my mind is this. Okay, this is what blows my mind. Okay, this guy is a socialist liberal ideologue. Now this is what is even freaking worse. In American politics, can we every once in a while have a person like this that appears and wants to be president and has these beliefs? Yes. Explain to freaking me, and I'm going to answer my own question though, explain to freaking me how all of the political leaders of his party and the political leaders of the states and cities that supported him, and all the voters that supported him, say, yep, that's what's good for our country. Yep. What the hell? How, you know, in other words, and, and see what drives me nuts about this and and everything else, is the freaking having power, the, the purity of just having power, the ego, the narcissism of just having the power rather than solving a freaking problem and leading America to the promised land. No, 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 no. It's more important that we hold on to the Senate. We hold on to the presidency. We win the House. We win governorships. We win states. It's the, it's the lust. It's the lust of just the power, to have the trappings of power, the secret service, the big mansions, the, the be, be on the stages, all of that is what drives it. I mean, it is impossible for anyone to tell me that Barack Obama wants to freaking solve a problem in this country. He don't want to solve any goddamn problems. It's hard to argue your point. He doesn't want to solve problems. There are so many problems to take care of. I mean, to make climate control the first one, I mean, or... Gay yeah, he, t he talked about gay rights, uh, he talked about um, uh, climate control, wow, right now, we ready to, oh, and he tied climate control with the future generations. Well, guess what, Barack Obama, we're going to be freaking bankrupt thanks to you for the future generations. We are bankrupt. I mean, we're $16 trillion in debt and climbing for how many billions of dollars every day. They just raised the debt ceiling for another three months. And what's going to happen in three months? Are they really going to have a balanced budget? I don't know how they can do it. He's talking about more money here, more money there. 
not changing Social Security, not changing Medicare, not changing Medicaid. Everything has to be touched. Everything has to be done. Uh, it's just going to get worse. And they're living a dream right now in a dreamland, thinking that somehow, because he was voted in, that his agenda is what everybody wants. And it's not. And I think it's irresponsible. I think it can't go on. I think it's time to really look in the mirror and say, hey, you know, let's think about my daughters. Let's think about my grandchildren. What is going to happen to them? Who is going to pay this debt? And it, it's getting bigger. Why in the hell don't we go to war, figuratively, with this guy? Instead of concessions. Here, here is the robots, Boehner, Portman and Company. Well, he's got the upper hand on us right now on the fiscal cliff issue, so we're just going to back up and concede that one. When we get down to the debt ceiling, that's when we're going to stand tall and we're going to grow some gonads and stand up to him. Then the debt ceiling comes up. Well, you know, we're going to retreat from this. We're going to give him three three months, you know, until we eat a budget. And then we're going to insist, because then, then maybe finally some of our testicles will grow big enough to hold him off. And that's when we're going to draw the line to say on the budget. It's like they keep freaking retreating and saying, well, we're going to get tough down the road. Right? We're going to get tough down the road. Let me, I got a message for McConnell, Portman, Boehner, and the rest of you. You are freaking wimps. You have no courage. You're all about your self-political preservation as well. You know it. And you know what? What the hell good are you if you're not stopping this from happening? You know what? I'm being serious. If you can't stop the Obama agenda, then what the hell good are you in office? None. What the hell? What good are they? Well, the sad part is we did have a chance to change it, but uh, unfortunately the American people spoke and voted the guy back in for whatever reason. But at the point, the guy is, he wants to... I'm running for president in 2016, I'm, I just want you to know. I'm voting for you. I'm not kidding, I'm running for freaking president. And they will, they will, they will freak out, baby. For, I can tell you right now, first debate, first debate, and they, they poll the audience, uh, it'll be like 100% Bulldog won that one, and the rest of them will just go ahead and drop out right then and there. You just watch. They'll be like, holy cow, where's this guy coming from? I want to be on the bulldog train, but, uh, you know, something has you want to be, be Hey, you want to be Surgeon General of the United States? I'm in. Count me in. <laughs> you'd be a great Surgeon General. <laughs> Seriously, you'd be a great Surgeon General. Well, the bottom line is we all just want to do Willie the same Willie's going to be my Attorney General. <laughs> Who's your Vice President? I don't know yet. All right. Chuck? I don't know yet. <laughs> I'll think about it. All right. Let me know. That's a serious, that's going to be a very important choice. But it will be my VP. But it is sad. I mean, you got a guy at present. It'll probably be a woman who is one quarter Asian, one quarter black, one quarter Hispanic, and one quarter, help me out. American Indian. American Indian. That's what I think I want to I'm going to, I'm going to have a plier. Now that was not serious. I was joking about that. But that would be funny, wouldn't it? To find a woman that's one quarter off of <laughs> Oh God. Play us a song, Jake, on Class X Ray. And by the way, Dr. Kurtzman picked this song out. Good choice. Concerning it's eight degrees on Class X Radio. And we are back on the air. Eric the Bulldog Dieters had to leave. He's on his way to court. He's going to take care of Sarah Jones. He is fired up. If you heard him over the last couple minutes, he is a passionate man. I wouldn't want to face him in the courtroom. No, today. I wouldn't want to either. I'm I don't just, think I ever would, but today especially. I'm just uh, running after him with some blood pressure medicine. He really get, That guy gets worked up as much as anybody I met. He is passionate. He is there for his clients. So we got this cold weather going on here. It is unbelievable. Horrible, horrible accidents yesterday out on 275 and 75. I mean, an 83 car pile up, a or 86 car, a 52 car pile up on 75. And apparently, it was just a very localized area where it was just a real quick whiteout. Yeah. Because there wasn't a whole lot of snow anywhere else, but there was a whiteout, and then there were trucks and pile ups, and you know, unfortunately, one uh, young girl got killed in the accident. We send our heartfelt warm feelings towards her and her family. Uh, 
it's probably lucky that a whole lot more people right. were killed yeah. on that. I mean, when you one. see those pictures, it's surprising that yeah, the, the weather can get only one person. Yes, it is. They are some horrible. And, and pictures. it wasn't even in the car wreck. It was just a kind of freak accident on the side of the road. Yeah, apparently got crushed by a, a cable snapped on one of the, uh, the yeah. guardrails and uh, went into her, her neck. I think. Can't even imagine yeah. how horrible. And I wanted to do a throw out to Mick Cronin. He uh, his Bearcats did lose yesterday to Syracuse. Uh, who had just beaten Louisville, who's the number one team in the country. They were up by seven with five minutes to go, couldn't hold on. They lost by two, but against Syracuse, who's one of the absolute top teams in the country. It shows that uh, the Bearcats have what it's, uh, have, have a good, they should have, they have a great team, a great nucleus. Kashmir Wright skipped the last game because of his uh, knee injury. Uh, I want to congratulate Mick Cronin on that. I think he did the right thing for the guy medically. Sometimes those coaches, or all the time those coaches, have so much pressure on them to perform that if they have their star player out, sometimes they let him play when they shouldn't. But he's a young kid. He's got a long career in front of him, and uh, it's nice to see the right thing done. I think he's doing a great job with UC. I think he's a great role model. He gets some complaints because he doesn't necessarily win as many games as they like. But they did make the Sweet 16 last year, yeah. losing to Ohio State. So there, there's a lot of good things going on at, around Cincinnati. I, th I think we just read in the ranked uh, maybe 12th or something, I believe. I don't think it was that. I think it was uh, maybe, maybe 20, 21st, 21st, I think. 21st, yeah. yeah. I got it backwards. You got that dyslexia thing going on? Yeah, I do. I do, actually. I struggle with the reading and all that. So. <laughs> So this is my first day here without the Bulldog. It's a little... First day uh, on your own, yeah. The first day on my own. Hopefully, uh, maybe he's listening on his way over to the yeah. court. Yeah, a little pressure on me here. So we got music, we got news, we got all this stuff going on. We got the inauguration yeah. yesterday. Uh, what a... You know, what the pomp and circumstance I love. I think, you know, it's a great thing. It really shows what a wonderful country this is. He did only have 800,000 people there versus 2 million people on his first inauguration. I guess the uh, excitement has waned. A lot of the hotels were not full. There were a lot of empty places, but they did have a lot of supporters there. I just, uh, once I read the uh, inaugural, inaugural address, I was a little bit disappointed because I just don't get the feeling that he's really going to do what's best for the country. Yeah, it wasn't as uh, thrilling as the first one was. Well, and then, you know, the first one, you know, all these promises he made way back when about he would never make the budget deficit more than $500 billion, half a trillion dollars a year. And now it's well over a trillion dollars a year and growing. And I just don't see an end in here. Uh, I agree with uh, Mr. Dieters. I may not be quite as passionate about uh, Mr. Boehner, Mr. Portman, and Mr. McConnell, but I think they do need to step up. I think they need to put their feet in the sand and say enough is enough. The American people cannot take this anymore. They cannot keep going. They cannot keep sending money to Washington. Taxes have already gone up. So many people are already complaining that their first checks of 2013 have more taxes taken out, uh, it, and it's not going to get any better with this administration, unfortunately. Another uh, great story is uh, a, a little exciting story. The All-Star Game, baseball All-Star Game, is going to be back here in 2015. That is a wonderful event, and now it's huge. Last time it was here, well, I remember 1970 when it was here at uh, Riverfront, big thing, when Pete Rose ran over Ray Fossey. That's probably one of the most memorable events yeah, ever, the most, yeah, I was ever say, in All-Star all history. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, you know, and it shows you what a battler he was. Here it is, an All-Star game that really at that point did not have a lot of meaning, but he played hard every right. day of his life. And someday, I do believe he will make the Hall of Fame. Hopefully before he dies. Hope, yeah. It, just his luck that will happen the year after. Yeah, well, the old better late than never. Right. Yeah, we had, a, you know, unfortunately Ray Fossey, he hurt his shoulder really badly yeah. in that accident. That kind of ruined his career. Yeah, it did. So I think he remembers it uh, very well, well I'm sure too. he does. A couple uh, unfortunate passings over the weekend in baseball. Some of the greats, right? Like Stan the Man Musial. Yeah, the guy played in St. Louis his whole career, so he really never got the publicity of a lot of his contemporaries, the Willie Mazes, the Mickey Mantles, uh, all the people that played in New York or San Francisco or some of the bigger cities. But here is a guy who was loved by everybody. You'll never see a bad word said about Stan the Man Musial. Uh, just a, a great guy. He was uh, 92 years old. He'd been married for over 60 years. Um, just uh, a real, he's what everybody should be. Have you seen the uh, 
the Ken Burns baseball documentary? I, I did not. Yeah, it, it's a 11 piece series, um, each is about an hour and 45 minutes, and they go through different eras of baseball. But I think that's a must watch for any baseball fan. They go through the golden golden era and then the starting up. Yeah, I've heard some great things about yeah, that. But really, bringing, really the, bringing the All Star game here is huge. It's not just a one day game, it's several, several days. Yeah, it's a lot got going the game, on. You got the, the home run derby. Yeah, you got um, yeah you got a lot going on there, and I think it's a great thing for Cincinnati. Yeah, I think it's we got to bring a lot of money to the city during that time. And yeah, a lot of excitement. Like last time I was here was uh, 1988, so this will be the first time in a new stadium. First time in my lifetime. Uh, you were born in Show, showing, showing my age. Yeah, there. thanks a lot, making me feel <laughs> old here. I'm yeah. excited though. Yeah, I'm course, very excited. Yeah, as far as All Star games though, uh, hockey started this weekend hockey did. too. And, uh, I remember you saying you played. I was going to ask you about that. I did a little Are you a bit. Big fan? I'm a I'm a nice fan. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in New Jersey as a Rangers and Islanders fan. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, one of my high school classmates is the owner of the Devils. That must be nice. <laughs> Call him up and uh, hook us up. See if he wants to relocate them to Cincinnati. Well, I don't know. He's having enough problems in uh, Newark with the mayor. There. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. I don't know about relocating, but uh, yeah, it's kind of exciting. Made the Stanley Cup Finals last right. year, and unfortunately, like the, uh, lost to uh, my LA Kings. The number eight seed, unbelievable! It just shows you all you got to do is make the playoffs. Yeah, especially in right. hockey, so many teams make that. They, they had a, they they did have a good team, but no one expected them to do what they did. And they swept, I think, two of the different series. Yeah, it's all about getting hot at the right time. Yep. You sound like you're a hockey player, also. Yeah, I, I played since I was eight eight years old and played the past two days. Oh, did you? Where do you play? I play here at Northern Kentucky, so uh, Anderson Road. Yeah, you young guys, I don't want to play with you young guys. You guys like hit and all that stuff. Yeah, we like we like our roughness. Yeah, I'm too old for that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Columbus got kind of uh, screwed out of the All Star game this right, year. Right. Yeah, that's extremely unfortunate. Yeah, that would hopefully ever... they give it to them next year. Well, they, I'm sure they plan it years in advance. Yeah. So uh, it's probably already. I mean, this was 2015. It's already set. So you can't, right. you can't take away next year's. But I'm sure they'll give it to them when the uh, next hopefully. one in line. And hopefully they'll still be there. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like the NHL is always arguing. They were in a lockout not too long ago. Yeah, it was like uh, 10 years ago. I think yeah. they lost the whole season. Yeah, they did. They? Yeah, now they have a short season, which is probably good for a lot of the players. Yeah, I think it's good. I mean, the playoffs are so long now in a lot of these sports. I mean, it used to be two teams in baseball would make the World Series, and, and that was it. Now you have, all the, now you have up to 10 teams. It takes a lot longer, and, but the reason they do that is because of revenue. And uh, I think it is time for me song to, time. Song time for my first pick of the year. How about some Bruce Springsteen, Jersey Boy, some Badlands. And we are back on the air. This is Dr. Lawrence Kurtzman of Kurtzman Plastic Surgery. I am subbing in for Eric the Bulldog Dieters, who had to run to court. We have uh, our typical Silverton Donuts here, the best donuts in town, handmade very, very every good. night. Thank you for bringing those. Oh yeah, Little Dog, he, he starts, oh great, you brought donut holes, I can only eat just one. Well so, now... So he ate one of those, and then another one, and then he ended up eating a right. whole donut. Now everyone's bringing food, so if you're going to do traffic for us, make sure you bring food, people. Well, I'm not going to do traffic, but how about if you give us a little update here, Jake? Let me give you a uh, little update. Cincinnati, there's an injury on McGregor Avenue at Reading Road, so be careful for that. That's all the information we have. Um, Cincinnati, there's a bust in the water main on Pfeiffer Road at Deerfield Road. Um, there's an accident on the exit ramp at I-75 southbound at Paddock Road. Uh, accident on East Fifth Street at Ray Street. Uh, Cincinnati, um, upper level on Western Hills via East of State Ave. And then uh, there's a disabled vehicle on the exit ramp at 75-71 southbound. Uh, Buttermilk Pike, so if you've uh, ever driven before, you know what to do about that. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, lot of stuff going on this morning. It was obviously worse yesterday with those yeah. horrible accidents. Very bad. And I encourage people, if you're in the accident, don't get out. Don't get to the side of the road. Stay in your car until things are clear. That is the safest place to be. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, some terrible happened yesterday because a, a child did get out of the car. We feel horrible for that, but we do want safety. We want uh, we want people to drive safely. Be careful if you got a whiteout. Slow down. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really got to be careful out there. There's just you know one thing triggered and end up with 125 cars and two accidents yesterday. Just horrible. Mm -hmm. Wild. And we got uh, birthdays. We were just talking about hockey. 
Mike Bossy, Hall Mike of Bossy, Famer. right? He was a hero for the New York Islanders when they won. Was it four or five uh, Stanley Cups in a row? Yeah, they, they. I think they were the longest running team, or the longest t running team recently, at least. Yes, yeah, right after the uh, the Habs, the yeah. Montreal Canadiens. Also, Linda Blair. I can't believe she's only thir 54. It seems like the Exorcist has been around for like yeah. forever. She's younger than I am. Not that I'm telling my age. Diane Lane, one of my favorite actresses, 48. But I do want to talk about one thing that is hurting plastic surgery. Michelle Obama, yesterday, right. and she comes out and she has bangs now. Everybody's talking about her bangs and her Jimmy, Jimmy Choo shoes. But the bangs, you know, she's hiding up those lines across her forehead. She's going to cut into um, some of my Botox business. You know, Botox is just a, a wonder drug used for so many things. I've been you know, teaching Botox and performing Botox procedures for over 10 years now. And Botox, while well, is best known for fixing a lot of the lines on your forehead, those angry lines. I saw a lot of angry lines from Bulldog this morning. You better watch out yeah, in the courtroom. He, and he, he can't grow bangs, so <laughs> he might be coming in soon to, to see you. Maybe a toupee? I don't know. No, yeah, probably, probably not. I, would I, probably, I wouldn't think so. Probably be pretty scary. So he could be coming in for his Botox, but then the judge won't know if he's angry. Maybe he get maybe his his signal can be throws off the toupee. There you go. He so, tosses it. So many other wonderful things that Botox does do for sweating of your palms, your feet, as well as your armpits. A lot of people have a severe problem with axillary or armpit sweating, and the Botox is a wonder drug. There, one injection and it lasts for about nine months. Does a great job. People call it life altering. Hmm. It's amazing. The other thing that's great for are headaches, migraine headaches. It is actually approved by the FDA for migraine headaches. I have a lot of patients that come in for the lines on their forehead, and they'll tell me that their Imitrex, which is used for migraines, the shots they take, they'll take 10 a month. After the Botox, they take zero. Mm -hmm. They come back to me not when the, the lines come back, which a lot of people do, obviously, but it's when the headaches come back, and it really can make a huge, huge difference. How often would you have to have to get something like that? Usually done? about every three to four months. Three to four months. And as soon as because it, it, these migraines can be absolutely debilitating. It put people in a dark, quiet room for two days. No, my my, my mom has suffered from migraines, and she she still does. And she has other health issues that are complicated, but yeah. Every now I, I hate to ask you how old your mom is, but she's probably younger than me, right? Uh, I she's almost. For, uh, almost 50, so. <laughs> She's way younger than me. Yeah, she, she, had a, with me. She, she had a, a brain aneurysm and she was in surgery for that. Okay. And um, while that was while she was in the surgery, she had a stroke. Yeah. And the left side of her body's uh, partially paralyzed. She can still get around and, you know, do things on her own. But she still she suffers from pain, uncontrollable pain. Yeah. yeah so, and, and headaches. Pain and headaches are just horrible things. They're so debilitating. They just... You know, they're there all the time, always as a reminder. They're very hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I occasionally get back pain. And I, I know just for a couple of days it kind of drives me nuts, right. let alone if it's a lifelong thing. Yeah, I mean, it's for her, it's, you know, pain is every day for her. And then headaches, you know, come and go. But usually she has a really bad headache at least once a week. Yeah, on a bright spot for Kurtzman Plastic Surgery, we just purchased a Cutera laser. And what that laser does is a lot of things. It does hair removal, which is one of the most popular laser treatments and one of the most popular non-surgical treatments. Especially, I know it's uh, eight degrees out, so we're not thinking about putting our bathing suits on. But come springtime, people need several treatments uh, of their laser hair removal, whether it's for their armpits, their bikini lines, uh, those hairy backs on the men, uh, which, you know, usually the bald guys have the hairiest backs. So I didn't even want to ask Eric. Ooh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't want to know. <laughs> you don't want to know. Yeah, it's too much information. But it also takes care of a lot of the age spots, the brown spots that you get on your face and your hands. Also, some of the broken blood vessels or rosacea on your face, the laser works superbly for. It's just something we're going to offer now. Uh, we offer all forms of uh, plastic surgery, uh, board certified. I was uh, kind enough to be voted in by my peers as a top doctor again in Cincinnati. Uh, I've got my own private practice just by myself. A nice, private, quiet, genteel office with low pressure right in the Kenwood area. Uh, doing great with my business. It's been there for about two and a half years and I just love what I do. I mean, it's a great, I, have the, I always feel like I have the greatest job in the world. Although here I am with my first day 
full time on the radio. Yeah. Maybe this will be the second greatest job in the world. Second I don't know greatest, what to say. Maybe. But I get to come back again tomorrow because Eric will be in court. He's many in court the next uh, few days, I think. Yeah, a few days. Fighting. Uh, I have a bunch of uh, my surgery on Thursday, so I won't be able to uh, fill in on Thursday. I think he's got another person coming. But uh, it's uh, very flattering to be asked by Eric Dieters. I think he does a wonderful job. Uh, in so many parts of his life. I mean, he's a, he's got, I don't think the guy ever sleeps, but and there he hardly. is. <laughs> and he's got so much energy. He's, got, he's really uh, quite a role model for a lot of people. I mean, he really does try to do the right thing. He's a, he's a great husband, great parent uh, first, which I think is the most important part of a person. He's also a great lawyer, and I think he does a great job on the radio, too. Yeah, works hard, hard worker. He's got a very talented, talented guy. He's got a lot of uh, insight and information that he shares with us. It, it, about him sleeping, sometimes he comes in and brags that he's had three hours of sleep. <laughs> it brags that that's a lot or that's a little? That, that's a lot. I said, <laughs> man, I got three hours. I feel great <laughs> as I'm sleepy from falling asleep at nine. And yeah. I, don't know, I don't know how he does it. Yeah, well, he, 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 does. does, he doesn't even drink coffee in the morning, so it's not that. No, he, does, he, does, he likes his caffeine pills every now and then. Yeah, but you can only go on so long for that. you got to take care of your health. And it is shown that you really do need more sleep than three hours a night. You need a good six to eight hours, and it's so important for a lot of reasons. People that are sleep deprived have trouble in a lot of other aspects with, with falling asleep during the day, with high blood pressure. It's so important to really rejuvenate and recharge your batteries. But you do hear about people such as him that only sleeps a small amount. And I think that is the end of my first day. We are going to go into a little bit of music, a wonderful song by George Harrison, What is Life? Thank you, all you viewers and listeners. We will be back tomorrow with Eric the Bulldog Dieters and the Doc. Have a great one.